Bonsoir. Hello, hello, everyone. Ooh, mate, mate stream today. Yo, 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 yo. Thank you for the follow. Thank you. Uh, today, I am going to be doing another game dev interview, and this time, we're doing it in Minecraft. I'm very excited. Uh, I did this once before with Luna. That was really fun. So let me... Oh, no, it's not showing up. Oh, no. Probably because I don't have it pulled up. Now is it showing up? Question? Okay, yes, now it's showing up. Um, oh, God. Why are these foxes fighting? Oh, God. Everything's a mess. Okay, so let me go ahead and... Um, Start. Oh no. Oh no. Hold on. Technical difficulties. Hold on. One second. One second. I got this. It's okay. 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 We're good. We're good. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> oh. Scuff stream. Always good. All right. So. Let me introduce who I'm interviewing today. Andrea Blythe is an author, poet, and game writer, and a lover, lover of the fantastical, horrifying, and weird. She is the creator of two small solo game projects, a freelance game writer for indie developers, and the author of three poetry books with a fourth on the way. So, let's say hello. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, we got everything to work, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm back on. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. Wait. Hold on. Everything. I didn't have my volume up. Okay. There we go. Um, quick test for the chat. Is the sound good? Is the sound doing okay? Can we hear everyone? Because I always seem oh. to have trouble. If if my mic is too loud, because I feel like my mic might be too loud. Maybe. Hopefully not. Let me actually turn it up a bit okay this may be good okay so okay would you like Hi. to introduce yourself sure <laughs> i am andrea blythe i like the bouncy <laughs> um i'm andrea blythe i'm an author poet and game writer i've um <clears throat> done some freelance game writing kind of stuff and some solo work and I've also like most of what I've published has been poetry I've got three books of poetry that have been published Ooh. and I have a fourth one that's coming along uh that should be published later this year um and I have high hopes for that one I'm very excited about it Ooh, that's yep. great that's awesome poetry <laughs> i remember in high school i wrote one poem and it was published in like a compilation book and then i was like okay i'm good <laughs> that's it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i find i think i gravitated to port towards poetry first because it lets you you just kind of narrow in on the language itself right it's like very specific word choices very specific tone mm -hmm. you can kind of create a feeling over the course of 10 lines and um you don't have to worry like there's a beginning middle and end to it but you don't have to like what is this character's motivation right and, like, <laughs> right right all the story structure stuff that has taken me longer to kind of figure out and learn oh hello that no oh no <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> come here, wolf. Okay, so first question: As I kill this zombie, do you have a biggest inspiration, and if so, how do you use that inspiration in your work? I have so. This is such an interesting question because I feel like uh, I have a lot of inspirations, a little bit of everything. Oh my god! Oh Jesus! <laughs> We're using it that <laughs> the fox is just uh, watching us. <laughs> And um, inspiration changes over time a lot. So, mm -hmm. like, when I was in high school um, and into college, like, my favorite authors were Toni Morrison, Amy Tan, and Stephen King. And it was... <laughs> yeah. And I was obsessed with Stephen King for mm -hmm. a long period of time. Oh, yeah, I got to respawn. <laughs> I was just staring at the screen. Um and 
and so like horror is a very big one and that kind of stuff but mm. then like as it's changed now i would be like neil gaiman is more of ah uh, yes influence as opposed to stephen king and then as i get more into like game writing i'm finding influence of um the different kinds of studios work but like there's so there's like inspiration everywhere right and, um I thought Minecraft was going to be more relaxing to be able to talk about. It's not. Hold on, let me see if I can change the settings. It's here. I'll put it on a peaceful. No, it's, fine. it's part of the entertainment. You gotta leave. You gotta just keep dying of the conversation. Uh, um, yeah, and then so yeah, inspirations change over time, and everything's a little bit inspiring. I go to an art museum, and you might see a piece that mm -hmm. evokes a feeling, and that feeling evokes a story, or you know right uh you read an amazing story or there's a new movie and even stuff that you don't like oh yeah i forgot <laughs> um is like um you know uh uh what am i trying to say like even stuff that's oh yeah i don't have anything because i kept dying um i <laughs> even stuff you don't like there's inspiration in that in terms of um uh right yeah i get what you're saying the lessons, the lessons that you get from that right like i have learned now that i die a lot from zombies um <laughs> that is a lesson i have learned <laughs> uh yeah um if you were to like ever like you mentioned liking stephen king would you ever consider mm -hmm. writing like like similar to that like diving into horror and stuff like that I am I will absolutely be writing some horror stuff Ooh. in fact the, the poetry collection that I have coming out is actually um it's a found poetry collection and it is um oh I hate you I'm sorry <laughs> uh, um so Stephen King wrote this unfinished novel called The Plant it was an uh -huh. experiment for him and it's I did found poetry based on that so I took words and phrases from that text oh. re-gobbled it up and spit it out into new poetry and um that is what the book's out and so this poetry is kind of this weird uh look at um identity and who gets to tell their own what's who's right. telling the story and um and threats of the world and that kind of thing particularly that is as so... a female presenting body Ooh, that sounds yeah. absolutely amazing that sounds so cool yeah thank you so much yeah i'm, I'm super super excited about that so that's that's on the poetry side but I have a horror novel that's been in various stages of trying to be <laughs> for a long time right. and eventually I'll it. Um, the one of my <laughs> one of my solo game projects uh, was a creepy uh, bitsy game. Um, and that one's available online for free to play if anybody wants to play it. So horror is a huge one i've i've liked horror since i was a kid same um, yeah i found myself though that i enjoy like playing horror or like watching horror movies more than i enjoy writing because i feel like it's when you're writing it it's so much hard to convey you know like to get all that fear and stuff i am fearful now for my life <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Minecraft is secretly a horror game too. It really <laughs> is. <laughs> um, I know exactly what you mean. Like there's it's there's different experience of things that like I it just doesn't translate right into your own personal tone kind of thing. Like you kind of, as you write things, figure out what it is you like to write and how mm -hmm. you like to write it and that sort of thing. And and that's a process that's just through the act of writing, you know? Right. Yeah. All right. Next question. How did you get into your line of work? So this could be a very long story or... <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, because the, there's a few ways of of looking at it in terms of I'm I'm an editor in addition to a writer. Um, there's like the authoring side of it. There's the right. game writing side of it, and they all kind of have different paths. Um, I knew from college that I wanted to do writing and or editing. And um, I ended up uh, realizing that um, I didn't have the experience to get an actual job mm -hmm. in editing even though I went through college and everything, but they always wanted, you know, it's like the catch 22, you run into this in game writing and so right. many other things. Like they want you to have experience doing the thing, but they won't give you a job to, or, or they right. want an unpaid internship that I can't afford to do kind of thing. So I had been several years out of college and, um, went back was doing like daycare and substitute teaching and substitute teaching is its own personal hell and <laughs> uh, and it was i needed the experience so i actually went back to community college to join specifically to join their newspaper uh program so mm -hmm. that i could get articles written and i knew i would write them because I had the requirements too. It was part of a class. And so, um, and I did that. And that helped me land my current job as an editor at a magazine, Ooh. Um, which I've, I've been at this job for 16 years now. And it's wow. been a great job. It's, it's a very specific technical magazine. Um, that I never thought I would know as much about aluminum manufacturing as I do, but I do now. <laughs> and um, it's been amazing. Um, and I'm starting to feel like uh, some new challenges. Right, <laughs> right. Be. Oh, I'm, I'm looking into that. But, uh, you know, in the midst of this, you know, doing the writing, constantly writing things, constantly you know, trying, trying to finish novels. There's multiple novels right. that are in the graveyard of my files. I get uh, that. You know, completing some short stories, taking workshops, doing poetry, um, did a couple of short film projects with some folks, um, for a 24 hour project and then a 48 hour project. Both of those were a great time. Mm -hmm. Um, and really, for me, getting into doing the thing is just doing the thing. Um, the so, you know, like you have to keep doing it. Keep doing it. Yeah. It's like uh, it's like you you write the poetry and you right. then you have to submit the poetry and you hope that maybe somebody Something likes happens. the poetry. Yeah. It's the the constant challenge of that, um, and uh, it's worth it. I enjoy doing it because I enjoy doing it. It's right. also nice when people read it and say things about it. But right, there's definitely you have to <laughs> you have to enjoy it enough to keep doing it. Otherwise, the, you're gonna get uh, burnt out real quick. <laughs> real quick, yeah. Is there a, so, is there a yeah, reason that you chose games specifically, like to get into writing games? So that's kind of funny, um, because because I've been in my current job, so I didn't even occur to me to be a games writer until uh, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Um. Like maybe five years ago, let's say, and I, like, I was like, I knew I wanted to make a change, and I'm still kind of in that spot, and um, so I um, what? Sorry, can you repeat the question? My brain just <laughs> totally uh, started to stop functioning in mid sentence. Is there a reason you decided to go into writing games? Yeah. So I like. 
once I realized that I could do it and it was a job in terms of, because I love writing books, but it's, and poetry, poetry earns you next to nothing compared mm -hmm. to short stories, compared mm -hmm. to a potential novel. But all of that is speculative in the sense of you write a thing, you hope you sell the thing, or you self-publish the thing, and you hope people buy the thing. And there's no guarantee at the end of writing the thing that you're going to earn in income that will allow you to keep writing the things, which is really what you want to do in the first place. Right. The idea of game writing being a job where you get paid an hourly wage with its own pitfalls, obviously, um, was appealing to me in the sense of it comes with potentially insurance and, mm -hmm. you know, all the things that are required to exist in the capitalist society within <laughs> right. which we find ourselves. Now, once I started getting into the act of making games, then there came the pleasure of the process of making games, which is so wonderfully unique in and of itself. Right. And and providing the level of interactivity and and that joyful aspect of it and um you know, the so many different types of games and seeing, you know, like, what would it take to do a platformer compared to an open world compared to something branching like, um, right. uh, just blanked on the company name, but the Walking Dead game company. Telltale. <laughs> Telltale, thank you. <laughs> and um, there was joy in that experience. And as someone who loves poetry, I love form and seeing how form serves the story or function or tone that you're going for. And games provides some of that same vibe in having the ability to explore that through the many multitudes of different mediums and types of games that there are in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that is really interesting. It definitely seems I feel like at least once a writer will be like, hmm, games. Interesting. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, I could do so much with this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's so there's so much potential in games. Um and you see a lot of it in just across the industry in terms of the indies especially you get some very interesting things that people do with it and right awesome. which brings me to my next question that was a nice segue <laughs> what <laughs> are some things that you love about the industry um okay um i love gosh they, i mean i from like I love seeing what people do with games mm -hmm. and and I mean that from everybody like AAA has the potential to do some amazing things right and a small indie person who's one person in their basement has the ability to do some amazing things and um I I honestly love seeing all the different varieties of ways that you can mm -hmm. tell the story like one of my favorite uh, quote unquote stories is inside where there's like, yes. there's really not much of a narrative, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of words, but like, man, does it feel like a, such an interesting world? And there's a feeling that you get playing it even beyond just the shock of the weird crap that's happening in that game. Right. And, um, it's just so good but then and then you play something like Taytale, Telltale where it's just so it's more it's all about wordiness or right. the, the dialogue and right. the interactions of the characters and that kind of stuff and that's beautiful too so I love all those aspects right it, I love yeah go ahead it's definitely very like when I really started getting into games and like I saw how many different types there were it was like it was like a shock because I was like, there's mm -hmm. so many ways you could tell a story. 
yeah yeah it, and it's it's just i'm going down i don't know why i decided i'm going down <laughs> <laughs> and then the i don't know i could talking about the industry itself is so fraught right mm, now because right of this situation that is going on for so many devs um in the world and um but one of the things um that i like about it is the collaboration aspect of it mm -hmm. so seeing having the opportunity to work with people and have them come up with something that that surprises you and shocks you and you're like oh my god i never would have thought of that or even just oh this person did this amazing art and um you know like it makes this come alive in a way that i couldn't possibly have imagined and um or uh, making uh, what lies underneath, which is the little creepy adventure game that I made on my own. I uh, I hired a, a musician, mm -hmm. and I kind of gave her. I let her play a demo of the game, and I, I, you know, gave her some like it's supposed to be creepy, a little unsettling. And what she came back with was something that like was not what I imagined in my head at right. all. And yet at the same time was the perfect thing so um the it the surprises of working with other people is the other thing that i really love um about working you know doing right. anything in games. that's also another part that i love is like working with composers and you're like, okay, I have this idea. And they're like, great. And then they just run with it and they do all this amazing stuff. And you're like, wow, mm -hmm. I never thought that could happen. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like it's, oh, they just, uh, they come out of nowhere and they surprise you because people are brilliant. Right. If they're given a chance to be brilliant, you exactly. know? Exactly. Yeah. So what is your dream work? Like something you would just love to make. Mm. In terms of a specific project, God, I don't know. It, like when I think about my future in terms of a dream, it's not even necessarily a specific project, but it's like, but like I wake up, I take a short walk, I work on my novel in the morning, I get on a call and speak to the game dev team I'm working mm -hmm. with, the indie or whatever, in the evening or my own game project or whatever. And and then, um, you know, and then maybe the next day I'm writing poetry and, you know, on Sunday I'm talking to this indie filmmaker about completing a screenplay, you know, like mm -hmm. just the constant being able to, able to shift between things which is not realistic in terms <laughs> of <laughs> having the energy to be able to pull that off uh in terms of projects uh in games specifically like i have a few ideas like i even just have like i have another bitsy project you know it'll be another small game but like um I've been thinking about it and it's even more, more leans into the horror side of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's super exciting to me. And then, I mean, I love uh, the uh, NDA project that I'm working on now that I can't say anything. <laughs> so that's kind of a, it's a dream to be able to work on that project because I get to be a part of it. And, you know, I wouldn't have been two years ago. Um, and then from there, it's kind of like, I don't know it's i'm i'm open to seeing uh what's out there to surprise me when it comes to games right in particular i in terms of like fiction and poetry i have a list of like 30 things that uh, <laughs> i have finished, uh if not more so i can always go back to the mind basically of stuff that i <laughs> the, <laughs> the mind <laughs> yeah. um oh my god i'm gonna die no. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
um so that's fun but yeah the 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 dream is always kind of ever evolving in terms of like maybe you meet somebody and they they show you what uh a new thing to fall in love with that you didn't even realize that right. would be the dream thing you know that's what's great about the collaborative side of it Oh, this baby wolf kill is killing everything. Where'd it go? Oh, is it drowning? Don't drown. Stop hitting me. Go away. Nobody wants you. Yeah, uh, I definitely relate to having like a whole entire list of things. Because um, I have like two uh, notes on my phone. One is for like video games I want to write. And the other is like um, books I want to write. And it's like never ending. <laughs> It's, it's never ending. Like, I am not afraid of ever running out of ideas. Right. That is not fear that I personally have. The ideas are abundant. Uh, it's like they say, you know, ideas are cheap to a certain extent. It's mm -hmm. being able to sit your ass down and actually <laughs> right. write and, and make those ideas. And uh, there's a spider behind you. Uh, spider! Ah! <laughs> um Jesus. that really okay. is the test right yeah uh okay next question what are some hobbies of yours that you use in your work or do you keep them separate um so when i saw this question i like i immediately thought of sketching and art mm -hmm. which i think um I, I'm not an expert at it, uh, although certain family members would disagree with me, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but it's enough that, like, when I'm working on a game or with an artist that I have a sense of being like, I, I think the color is a little off here, or I think, you know, right. maybe there's something proportionally going on that I can kind of provide feedback or... Or even give like a very basic outline sketch to like a level design person and just say, here's my thoughts. I'm sure you can do 10,000 times better. That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, this is a hobby that I'm protective of. Like I've had the thought of like, oh, hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know... I, I don't want to monetize it. So I'm okay right. with using it as a base of, you know, something that I add to, you know, as flavor for the rest of the work I do. But, like, I'm not going to start selling prints. Right, right. Like, uh... ah! <laughs> it's a fine. It's okay. <laughs> um... Because I think it's important to have hobbies that are just... Right. The hobbies. hobbies. Right. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. Because they're definitely... It feels like there's a pressure recently. Like, especially mm -hmm. in these times. Like, you have to have a side hustle. If you have a hobby, you have to monetize off of it and do all this stuff. And it's like, I just want to do it for fun, man. <laughs> yeah, like, I just, like... I, I want to learn watercolor because I want to learn watercolor because right. it's just cool to see the way that works, you know? Right. Like, that's plenty. That's enough on its own. Like, yeah. Absolutely. All right. What <laughs> is one thing you're looking forward to in the future? Um, I, I have been uh, working with uh, Patrick... Uh, Kins Kin I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I'm just now realizing. <laughs> um, at One Frog Games, he's part of the narrative department, um, and uh, he. We are hoping that he. It's mostly him. He's doing all the heavy lifting, but I'm helping with the narrative. <laughs> uh, that the game will come out within the next few months. We're hoping. At Ooh. the very least, there should be a solid demo. Um, and so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to continuing the work with the other freelance game project that I'm working on. Um, 
absolutely looking forward to my, you know, the book, my poetry book coming mm -hmm. out this year. That's super exciting. And, um, and then just seeing what projects I can get up to next. Like the, I'm always excited about being able to continue making things. The joy is the making things themselves. Right. Yeah. That's a lot of good stuff to look forward to. <laughs> I will definitely be keeping my eye out. Um, what? Okay. Uh, I will ask this because I feel like it's a, an obligatory question and I feel like I need to add it to my list of questions. But what are some of your favorite games and what games are you currently playing? Okay. <laughs> I can have a long list of favorite games. Um, <laughs> but I, so start with currently playing i'm currently trying to finish god of war 2018 i've kind of had a thing where i've been playing that for over a year and um it's because i keep playing it for a little bit and going oh my god this game is amazing i really just gotta like i'm so excited about it and then i get distracted and i come back to it months later and <laughs> like i don't know what what's is happening, happening. so i have to learn to love it all over again right um Absolutely adore that game. Um, one of my favorites from last year was Alan Wake, which mm -hmm. I loved for the absolute bonkers storyline and mind bendy uh, aspects of it. I adored that game so much so that I was willing to put up with the absolutely frustrating combat in that <laughs> first Alan Wake game. Um, but that was absolutely ah, god spider um yeah that that game i loved um the horizon zero dawn series is one mm -hmm. of the favorites of like rpgs lately fallout was one of the games like the first crpg fallout was one of the games that showed me that i loved rpgs and showed me that i loved dystopian uh post-apocalyptic storylines um I could keep going. <laughs> Inside, I've mentioned Journey yeah. is another one. Ooh, Journey. That's uh, a good one. That one, I feel like, is rarely mentioned. Oh, my God. Journey. I streamed that one. And I just remember vividly, like, there's this point where, um, where, like, you get tacked by this thing and you've been gathering this ribbon. And I just remember going... <laughs> <laughs> bursting into tears. <laughs> um, and then you get through the whole like storyline, and it's so uplifting and beautiful. Right. And I want to go back and try to do the like where you follow the same person, stranger, throughout the whole game. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would be such a fun thing to do. Is there any game that you've been wanting to try out? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all um, of them. All of them. But specifically, I, I kind of have a, a list running. Um, after playing Alan Wake, Control is definitely on my list in Alan Wake 2. I've heard such amazing things about Alan Wake 2 that I kind of can't wait to get there. And then the another one is, uh, which I probably wouldn't have picked up on my own, but I was gifted Red Dead Redemption, the first game uh, uh, for Christmas yes. this year. Mm -hmm. And I, since being gifted it, like half a dozen people have come and like, been like that's the best narrative game it's experience the, ever. Both, both of them are totally i love them i love them so much <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's that I, that might actually come before control because of how many people right <laughs> uh, yeah plus the gift giver is like you have to play it so that you can tell me like she doesn't even play video games and she'll, <laughs> she'll go ask Pete go into GameStop and be like what games are the good narrative games and just buy whatever they tell her to buy <laughs> <laughs> all right seems good <laughs> <laughs> I'm like cool works for me <laughs> I'll be completely honest with Alan Wake I have been interested in playing it but I cannot play horror games I can watch them but I 
cannot like at all. I get so See, spooked. <laughs> funnily enough, just because the combat is so frustrating, I would actually, if if you're a newbie to horror games, I would recommend Resident Evil 2 Remake before I would recommend oh. Alan Wake. Because the combat is so much better. It's still frustrating in some stuff because you have limited supplies, but like there's um oh yeah, I'm gonna die just from food. <laughs> I forgot I need to eat in this game. But uh, it's less frustrating in terms of the combat. And uh, that was one of the baby stepping into horror right. things that I did. I did play, um, like, for, like, a, uh, a uh, reward for my chat, I played Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, whatever the one that you walk around. I forget what it's called. That was so bad my heart rate was like way up there the whole entire time that's a hard one man it is that's, like, uh, that's all jump scares and right stuff. Like, i don't know why like, i did it to myself <laughs> i'm impressed <laughs> i'm not a hard game person and he went for five nights i feel like uh that's the kind of gameplay that would frustrate me because i'd panic and not figure out, get lost trying to figure out what screen I was on. Right. Like, like, wait, but like, where, where are they coming from? <laughs> Panic through the screens. That's what I would do. Oh, the doggy loves you. Hello, doggy. Or they love each other. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, uh, Resident Evil. I feel like definitely would be easier. I do have Resident Evil Village, which, like, I've watched a whole playthrough of before, and I really love Carl Heisenberg, so I feel like I wouldn't be as scared. Just like, ooh, yay, that my favorite really character. <laughs> I loved that one, for sure. Yeah, it was a good one. There, There is one true, like, I feel like most of it is, like, the typical Resident Evil, except for, like, this one spot where it amps up the horror uh-huh i can't I say was it the one before the one with the bugs uh it is the one in the dollhouse yeah i think i think resident yeah i don't know wait don't don't, <laughs> don't kill the fox please please don't get angry at the fox okay who's getting angry at the fox oh the the doggies all right cool now I will turn to chat for some questions. So if you guys have any questions, any at all, feel free to ask and I will relay them. Wow, we only died a good number of times. <laughs> better than nothing oh shit that fox is getting too close oh okay since we're waiting to see what chat says okay i have a question for you okay what is one of the favorite stories or lessons you learned from doing these interviews um I think the one thing is that everyone is so passionate about it that it like gives me encouragement. I feel like especially recently I have been very discouraged with making games, but talking to others and then seeing how they react and like how the people who watch react really like uplifts me and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, this is all fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> like Oh wait, there, there's, there's a sunrise. Right, exactly. In between, in between the night, you know, like, right, like, like this experience of this game. We fall into the night and we get attacked by zombies and you know the capitalistic forces of uh, skeletons. <laughs> and, then, <Exactly. laughs> and then the sun rises and we're like, oh wait, but we can make our cute little house. Right. <laughs> it's fine. It's all fine. But yeah, it's all fine. Well, we're gonna survive this. 
It's also nice to see that, like, oh, I'm sorry, puppy. I'm sorry. Oh no. Wait, let me give you, let me give you a bone. Oh wait, how how do I? Okay, there you go. Uh, but yeah. Um, and I think also that seeing that um, everyone is so into narrative stories in games is also really nice because before this. My brothers play games, but it felt like they never wanted to talk about the story. Like, uh, mm -hmm. both my brothers are, like, League of Legends players. And one of my brothers is, like, a big Apex and uh, Valorant player. So it was very difficult. <laughs> so meeting with like-minded people who also love story is like, yeah, this is good. But yeah. Oh, we got a question. Would Andrea ever think about making a game centered around slash written with poetry since she's made a lot of po poetry books, if you haven't done so already? I have not done so yet. Um, one, Someone from our cohort uh, made a game, it's on itch.io, called House of Poems. Mm -hmm, yes, I saw that, that one. If you're wanting, a, if anybody's wanting a game of poems, but... Um, I haven't figured out yet how to build that in a way that feels interesting to me. So I would absolutely be open to the idea of doing something like that, but I would have to find an in for me, you know, mm -hmm. like we were speaking of things that like you love, but maybe not necessarily, uh, right kind of thing. Like right. I, I love, I love zombies. I'm a zombie girl. <laughs> Favorite horror movie monster. Um, I don't feel like I have a unique enough story to write a zombie story at this point. Right. And maybe I will find one, but uh, for the moment, I'm happy enjoying other people's zombie stories and seeing what they do with it. Um, so in a similar way with the poetry, I would, I would have to kind of like... Uh, you know, see how that goes, see if something comes to mind that feels like it fits game-wise. Right. And it would be really interesting. I think, I don't know if I can remember any games off the top of my head, besides the one that you mentioned, that have poetry. I know a lot of games use poetry, but There's not like one. centered around. Yeah, there's another one that's in development and cannot remember the name of it at this particular moment, of course. Um, but I saw uh, a short trailer. It's a it's a solo small game project. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know. I mean, it could be interesting to do something Alan Wake ish, where because in Alan Wake he's writing a story and it that story is also the experience of his story that you're playing. So if there was a way to kind of mess around with poetry being an expression of the story that you're experiencing might uh -huh. be an interesting way of approaching something like that. Um, yeah, it, I may have to ponder. I'll ponder. Right. It's definitely a difficult but fun challenge it seems like for sure there are so many sticks what the heck all right well i guess on to the last question which like isn't really a uh question but it is promo time so you can go ahead and <laughs> talk about anything you want uh i totally did the wrong command wow collab <laughs> there we go um you can yeah. uh, say where to find you, where to find your games, where to find all your work, all that jazz. So on uh, Blue Sky Threads, Instagram, and the site formerly known as Twitter, I am at Andrea Blythe, one word. Um, and uh, what I would love is um, in the little link tree link, if anybody signed up for my newsletter, I revamped it recently. It's now called Infinite White Space, and I'm using Ooh. it to not only promote my own work, but also kind of just talk about 
the challenges of facing the blank page as a creative and talking about writing and storytelling and all that kind of stuff. And it's also where you can find out, get the cover reveal for like the poetry book coming out. And I can tell you about all the other things uh, that I'm excited about in the near future. That would be a great place to kind of keep updated for sure. Yes, please just, sign up you know. for that. <laughs> yeah great so, that's a big one well this was a very fun interview <laughs> very eventful <laughs> yes this is where we blew up and <laughs> this is where i started digging a hole and then decided not to and then <laughs> this is where i died i also died over here <laughs> i also died over here <laughs> i died multiple times <laughs> oh Get them, dogs. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Jesus. No. They just, okay. Seriously, this is a horror game. They come it out of nowhere. Really is. There are some horror <laughs> mods for Minecraft where I'm like, oh, no. I don't. Why would I subject myself to this? It honestly doesn't need to. I like I, I put it on a little bit this morning just because uh, I was like, I'm a Minecraft noob. I want to at least know the basic controls so uh -huh. that I'm I'm not fumbling around going, wait, how do I, like, mine? How do I, like, cut down a tree? So, uh, but yeah, I was so tense, running away, constantly getting hit, killed by things at night. <laughs> and then still during the day, and um, I was so afraid. The average Minecraft the experience. <laughs> you teleported, puppy. Yeah, that dog teleports to your side. They teleport if you like get too far away. If you like zoom away, they'll be like teleport time. Teleport. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did not know that about the doggies. Now I do. I need my own hor hor uh, What is it? Horde horde of doggies? No, horde? that's a horde of a zombies. pack pack of wolves. Pack pack of doggies. <laughs> All I'm right. Good with words, I promise. Yes, <laughs> this is how us writers talk. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> good at writing, talking. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for coming on. I enjoyed it so much. I had so much fun too. Thank you. Yay! I will talk to you Woo later. Woo! <laughs> All right, bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, I'm going to log out of this game because I know I'm going to die. So let me go ahead and switch to just chatting. Yay. So if you enjoyed this interview, um, I will put it up on YouTube. It'll probably come up tomorrow because I need to download the VOD and everything. But other than that, uh, thank you all so much for- Oh, wait, no, no, not yet. I, um, I will probably be playing or streaming tomorrow. Um, my brother shares his Steam library with me. So whatever game he gets, I get. And he got Helldivers too. And it looks fun. I'm not going to be good at it. I know I won't be good at it. So I'm probably going to play it so everyone can watch me suffer. Yes. Okay, now I'm done. Thank you everyone so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.